Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is flatten BST to sorted list and it is a medium level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given a binary search tree with n nodes and each node has a distinct value. Our goal is to flatten the tree such that the left child of each element points to nothing and the right child points to the next element in the sorted list of elements. So for example, uh, this is the original uh, binary tree or binary search tree. We have to make the linked list or make the tree like this where you can see each node does not have any left child but each node does have its right child where each right child is in increasing order. Right, so this was the original tree. Now 2 was the smallest element. This was converted to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Right, so how can we solve this problem? They have also mentioned that uh, we are not allowed to use any extra storage except for recursive calls. So by extra storage, they basically means you, you are not expected to create a new binary tree out of this. One way is to obviously take all these elements, store it in a vector or some kind of array. Then after you have done that, make a new binary tree from that particular vector. This could have been one easier way and uh, they, this is not the expected solution basically. So let us see how can we actually solve this problem. This problem is one of the uh, greatest examples of why when you are uh, discussing recursive problems or when you are thinking about recursive solutions, you do not have to focus too much on the solution. You just have to focus on the current state. right? So we are going to discuss it in a way so that uh, we are not focusing on the problem. We are focusing on a very small sub problem of the Victor problem. Right. So let us consider this particular case. Right. Let us say A, B, C. This is a binary search tree. So obviously A would be smaller than B and B would be smaller than C. Right. So what is the desired output of this particular tree? A, B and then C. Right. So this is A, this is B and this is C. This is the desired output. Now let us say, let us consider one more thing, A, B, C. Now let us say, this was a part of some other tree, right, this is the left child of some other tree. So what is going to be the output? We are not solving for this particular tree, let us just solve this smaller subtree first. So we are currently solving for this only tree, we are not concerned about this tree, I just uh, drew, drew it so that you know that there will exist some tree out there, right. Now. When we solve the smaller tree, it will look like this A, B, C. Right. So, this is how the tree will look like when we have solved this, this particular sub problem. We have not yet solved the upper problem, but we have solved the smaller sub problem like this, and the tree will look like this. Right. So, at each stage, let me draw for the right half as well. If it is possible for right half, it will also be possible for the left half. This is A, this is B, this is C. Right. So, this was the original node. Then we have A, then we have B, then we have C. These two sub problems, this one and this one, were solved in a similar fashion. You see what happened was when this particular node called on its left half, this subtree returned its smallest element. Right. So, you can see now to the left, the smallest element is present. We are not discussing about how this B came here, but we know that this subtree returned its smallest element so that this link has changed and now its left has become A. Similarly, when this tree called on its right half, this subtree, smaller subtree returned its smallest element and this link is now this smallest element. Right. Now let us solve the bigger problem as well. So when this particular node, let us say D, D would be greater than all of these elements. Right. D would be greater than all of these elements because this is a binary search tree. So now in the next step what would happen is A will be like this. So let us say A is like this A then B then C and then D. So this is B, this is C and this is D. This is one more extra step but in the case when we were moving towards the right half we did not have this extra step. This, this would be the final solution because in this particular case if let us say this is D then D would be smaller than all the other elements A, B and C. Right. So, whenever we are traversing through the left half, we have to make sure that this C after C, we add D right here. Right. So, this is our whole problem divided into smaller sub problems. So, what did we learn? The very first thing that we learned was whenever, whenever a node is either calling 
on the left half or the right half that particular subtree is going to return its smallest element right we know this thing the second thing that we know is when only when a node is calling on its left half the biggest element from that subtree is going to mark its right node as the parent right so basically when d called on its left half right here d called on its left half now the biggest element in this particular or the biggest node in this particular subtree is c so what is c going to do c is going to mark its right as d so this node's biggest node is going to mark its right as its parent or the node which called it right this is the thing that we do on the left subtree we don't do the thing on the right subtree if you keep these two things in your mind then this abc will automatically convert itself into this particular thing right you realize that we didn't uh, did not discuss how did abc form into this one right we just discussed that some node we don't know what node but some node called this particular uh, subtree and that subtree returned the smallest element and if it is being called on the left half or if this subtree is the left node then its biggest element has to mark its next as the parent right these are the two things that we discussed so let me also write it when a node calls a child subtree the subtree is going to return its smallest node right smallest node so in this particular case a was the smallest node so a was being returned and this left child is being updated by a similarly here the smallest node was a so again this right child is being updated by a this is what i want to say now if the subtree is the left child of node then the subtree's biggest nodes right is going to be the calling node right so what did i say this is just the same thing that i discussed if a subtree is the left child of the node you see here this subtree is the left child of this particular node then the subtree's biggest node that is c in this particular case this node's right is going to be the calling node so this node's right is going to be this calling node which node this the, the node which called this particular subtree so this is exactly what we did here the right of c is going to be d right and after all the steps have been completed for each node you can set it left left as null pointer right this is what you have to do now again i'm saying this you should realize that we never discussed how this abc is going to get converted into this one right or this particular abc is going to get into this form we just discussed a very very general case that this node has a left child then this left child is going to return its smallest node and if this is the left child its greatest node right should be this calling child calling node right now the question is how do we actually maintain these smallest and these biggest child right we discussed what we need to do with the smallest node we discussed what we need to do with the biggest node but we did not discuss yet how to maintain these smallest and the biggest node so for each subtree let's say this is a node and it has left child so let me draw it this node left child right child left child right child left child right child right so for each node the smallest node is going always to be the leftmost node the leftmost node is always going to be the smallest the rightmost node is always going to be the biggest right so whenever we come let's say this is the smallest currently and this is the biggest for this particular node we have one new extra node so the smallest will always going to be the smallest contributed by the left subtree and the biggest is going to be the biggest contributed by the right subtree right because all the elements in the right subtree are greater and all the elements in the left subtree are smaller right so let me say this again whenever for a subtree you are trying to find out what is the smallest and the biggest node inside the subtree the smallest node is always going to be the smallest node contributed by this left subtree right because if we consider a smaller node from this right subtree all these elements are going to be greater than all these elements so we cannot find a smaller element in right subtree so the smallest element in the left subtree is going to be the smallest element of this whole subtree similarly the biggest element from the right subtree is going to be the biggest element of this whole subtree simply because if i take the biggest element from here it would even be smaller than this particular element or the smallest element from here from the right subtree right so this is how we can maintain the smallest and the biggest node right 
the only thing is let's say we have a node and its left subtree is null right so in this case this is going to be the smallest node similarly if you have a node its right subtree is null so in this case this is going to be the biggest node right the node itself so these are the two edge cases when the left or the right subtree are null this is something that you will have to deal with so now let us have a look at the code and you will realize how i only discuss this part again and this part right so i am focusing more and more on it because you see we did not even solve how to convert this abc into this format but we are still going to solve the answer or the solution to this particular problem simply because we know one of the transition states and rest everything will fall into place right so let us discuss how i wrote the solution so just a second you can clearly see what i am doing here is i have a simple function and called dfs so what i am here doing is i am calling the dfs function passing the root null pointer and one and i am taking its first so we'll discuss in a while what are all these parameters but first let us have a look at our function so our function is returning a pair of node so what is this pair of node it will be the greatest and the smallest nodes inside the current subtree this is the first is going to be the smallest the second is going to be the greatest right now what is it receiving it is receiving the node current node the previous node or the parent or the calling node what we say and it is getting a boolean parameter is left so is left is going to denote whether this node current node is the left child of the parent node of its parent node right why is this important you must already know because when we were discussing the left subtree we had to do a special operation that is why this part is important right now you see here while calling the dfs we are taking the first because we want a smallest node that is uh, reasonable we are passing the null pointer because there is no previous element why we are passing this is left equals to true because for the root node it does not have any parent but still we are passing the is left equals to true so even if you mark it as zero it doesn't really matter it should still work so for the first parameter you can either pass it zero or pass it one right now let me just quickly compile this and show you that this is still working even if we like change this particular parameter so you see we are getting a correct output now let us discuss further what you can see here is if the current node is null pointer i'm just going to return a pair of null pointers now i'm getting the result from the left subtree and i'm getting the result from the right subtree you see when i'm calling the left left half i'm passing this one and when i'm calling the right half i'm passing this as zero right to denote whether this is the left subtree or the right subtree now node left is going to be left first that means my current nodes left is going to be the smallest node in the left subtree that is exactly what we discussed similarly my node right is going to be right first because this part is exactly same for both of the nodes for the right sub half we take the smallest node for the left sub half we take the smallest node in both of the cases this is what i am updating here now i have to get the minimum and the maximum for my current subtree so if my node left exists my smallest is going to be node left otherwise my smallest is going to be node itself similarly if my right second right second here i could have also taken left first but but i just took node left because node left is essentially left first only right so left first you can see node left is there so you can take right node left or just for the sake of consistency i let me just write left first left dot first so what i am doing i am taking the smallest element from the left subtree if it is present i am just taking it directly otherwise it is not present i am taking the current node similarly for the max element i am taking right second that means the biggest element from the right subtree if it is present otherwise if it is not present i am taking the current node now if is left that means if my current subtree that is present is the left child of the parent subtree then i am going to set my max right as the previous node right so this is this particular step where i realize that this whole subtree is the right child of this particular node so i want to find out the biggest node in this particular subtree that is currently c this node i am going to set its right as this node d right this is exactly what i am doing here now i just set at the end my current nodes left as null pointer now and i just return the minimum and the maximum values so you see how simple this problem was the only thing was understanding one of the transitions if you understand one of the transition rest everything everything will be correct right now let me quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct
So you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.